is related to the quiz that you will be taking next class. You also did a worksheet, worksheet two, so I'm going to have you pull that out for stamping. And you also took some notes. So there's two things I'm going to have you stamp, uh, pull out for stamping today. Notes on friction, worksheet two. And then we're going to talk a little bit about um, friction, static friction, the graphical analysis for that as well. But go ahead and practice your force body diagram and your calculations. So, again, as I go through this, I'm going to make sure we have all the little details that I'm going to be looking for when you take your quiz. And for the force body diagram, what I'm looking for is your X and Y and your dot. I didn't have you do this, but what do I want you to do in your diagram before you even start? Circle the object in question. Now, in this scenario, we've got a car, we've got a person, we've got the road, and it's important that we circle the car because some students might want to circle the person or talk about forces acting on the person. That comes in when we talk about Newton's third law, equal and opposite forces. But when we're focused on just one object, circling the object in question means that every single force in my force body diagram should be the force of something on the car. So car is the last part that you put into that notation. So here we've got our forces, force of gravity. You can call it force of earth on the car. Always points down. That's the first one that should pop into your head automatically. The normal force of the hand pointing up on the car. And then we've got this applied force pointing left. And you can call it the force of the person. And then what is opposing it, it states here that uh, the car is not moving, has to be friction. Friction opposes motion. And the only thing that's keeping it from moving is that frictional force between the tires and the road. Everything is symmetric. So symmetry lines for X, double symmetry lines for Y, and this part will get 100%. Very good. <laughs> Here, we've got the sum of the forces equations for X and for Y. Again, it's symmetric, so you want to put the forces that are acting on each other equals zero. And same here, force of Earth, force normal equals zero. So um, Mert put it, the force on the O for object. Um, Ava put force on C. Either one is fine with me, as long as I know which object you're talking about. And then last but not least, we're doing some calculation. The only equation we have a value for is the um, force of gravity. And from our lab, and not everyone got this value, but a lot of uh, groups did. We found that relatively close, all your slopes were relatively close to negative 9.8, and that is our force, our gravitational force field value, negative 9.8 times your mass. Mass is 1,000. Um, so one thing I want to highlight here is we got the value 150 newtons. So 150 newtons is what value in our force body diagram? So let's think about that really carefully. 150 newtons, is that the force of gravity? What do you guys think? Did everyone plug that in? Grace? So it says, the person is pushing their broken down car. So the person is the 150 newtons. And sometimes it helps to put it into, into your force body diagram, 150 newtons. Okay, well, how are we gonna solve for the force of gravity then? What's the important other value that was given to you in this equation? The mass. So be careful here. We were given some sort of force, but you have to make sure to identify what that force is. We don't know the force of gravity, but what we do know is the mass. So right equation, we just need to make sure to plug in the right values. Okay, 
So let's go ahead and solve this. Luckily, negative 9.8 times 1,000 is pretty easy to do in your head. So I get 9,800 newtons. I've memorized, and a lot of you will do this, you'll memorize that the unit is newtons, but I like how Sammy put the units in her equation because then I can reduce my units, same way you reduce an algebra, and my newtons is the variable or the unit that's left over. Okay, now I'm gonna put it here that I've got negative 9,800 newtons for my force of gravity. Let's try to figure out all the other stuff. First of all, if my force of gravity is negative 9,800 newtons, what's my normal force? What's my force of the, um, or actually, I found an error. Not the force of the hand, but it's the normal force of what? What's creating the normal force? The ground. So you can call it ground, you can call it road. But I know you can do this in your head. What's the force of what's the force of the ground or what's the normal force acting on the car if my gravitational force is 9800 newtons? What do you think it is? Right off the bat. Did you have an answer? 9800, right? If this is equal to this, this must be 9,800 newtons. Okay. I would not accept that as a correct answer on the quiz, at least not full credit, because work is important. Let's go back to our equation. The sum of the forces, it's going to say use the sum of the forces equation. The sum of the forces of Earth is negative 9,800 plus the force normal on the object equals zero. I know you can do this in your head, but if you plug in the work at 9,800 to both sides, you get the normal force on the object equals 9,800. A lot of students did this. A lot of students, instead of subtracting, they just added the positive 9,800 in the equation and boxed it. That's fine with me, too. Because in your worksheet, it's going to say, use the sum of the forces equation to find the applied, um, the normal force. And if you use it this way with algebra, or if you just plug it in, that's okay with me. Questions? Okay, let's find the other force. What's the force of friction? I told you that my applied force was 150, so what's my force of friction now? Negative 150? What do you guys think? If this is 150, should this be negative 150? Everyone agrees? All right, let's think about direction. If I'm pushing to the left, I told you it was 150 newtons, but what am I missing in that number value? If I'm pushing to the left, what sign would that direction indicate? Think about your coordinate system. Right is positive. We know with gravity, down is negative. Up is positive. So what sign should I have for any forces pointing to the left? Negative sign. So this is something that a lot of students forget to take into account. If I don't tell you the direction, but you know the direction is pointing to the left or you know the direction is pointing down, you have to add the negative yourself. So that's really negative 150. We can do this in our head. The frictional force is now positive 150, which we're used to seeing negative frictional forces. But in the end, if I ask you to show me the work using some of the forces equations, the sum of the forces on X is the applied force, so negative 150 newtons, plus the frictional force equals zero. 
And then again, a lot of you know how to do this in your head. If you want to, you know that negative 150 plus positive 150 is equal to zero. So I'll take it that way. I'll take it this way. Okay, questions on this type of problem. Calculating with force body diagrams and some of the forces equations and understanding direction as well. I want new volunteers. We've done this many, many, many times before. So can I get a new volunteer tell me what's the force? It should be the first force that pops into your head acting on this shoe. It's just sitting on my table. Hey, gravity. That is the first force I want you to put on all your force body diagrams as long as it is on Earth. So force of Earth on shoe. Oh, this is this is more intro. Don't write anything just yet. Next one. The table. The table pushing upward. So force of table on shoe. You can call it a normal force. You can call it the force of the table. You can call this the gravitational force or the force of Earth. What else am I going to include here? What am I missing in my force body diagram? Not necessarily forces. My congruency lines. It's not moving on the y-axis, so include your congruency lines. Okay. My shoe's not very heavy, but let's say it was, and I started tugging on this shoe. What would the forces be acting on this shoe now if I were to tug on it? I've got friction, and what else do I have? What else is acting on it? Rachel. The applied force. It's not moving yet, though. So if I put, what, did, what direction did I pull? Applied force this way. Force applied on shoe and force of friction on shoe. What do I need to include? Alexa? Symmetry lines. No motion. It's symmetric. All forces are balanced. This is really hard to do with a really light shoe. but. Let's say my shoe was heavier and I started pulling with a harder force, even harder than I was pulling it initially. And it's still not moving. My force body diagram is going to increase its applied force. So now my applied force is bigger on shoe. It doesn't move. So, what does my frictional force have to do? To make sure that it doesn't move. It's equal to the applied force. As my applied force increases, my frictional force will match it. Force of friction on shoot. So now they're equal again. That happens up until the point that my applied force is strong enough to start dragging my shoe, or in this case, my heavier chair. So now that I've started pulling it hard enough, what does my force body diagram look like? So this is when we've got an object at rest. What does it look like once it's in motion? So I'm going to add another force body diagram here. I'm going to have the force of Earth. I'm going to have the normal force. And they're equal. What happens now? How does it change? Eric. My acceleration, rather, my applied force is stronger than my frictional force. So I no longer have balanced forces. My applied force on the shoe is large. And my frictional force has a maximum value. So the force of friction on shoe max. It's reached its max point. So now we have unbalanced forces, and we call this acceleration. So we've got an accelerating object, we've got an at rest object. Rachel. So 
like bring it know whether it's acceleration or like constant speed you need to see the And after so it's almost like basically like the word like acceleration how do you know so usually your problem is going to say either at rest or constant speed or it's going to say it's speeding up or slowing down so that's how you're going to know whether it's going to be unbalanced or or balanced so we're going to talk about constant speed in a little bit but i'm just going to make sure that you guys know how to label the purple graph that you have on there so it looks something like this this is my force of friction. And it increases and then kind of steadies out. So that's what you have on your graph, right? We're going to start labeling ours on the board, and you're going to copy this down on your sheet. Before we start, we've got static and kinetic. You guys learned about this already in your video. So what's the difference between static friction and kinetic friction? Someone new tell me? Eric? Without motion. So this is before the object's moving. It's got a frictional force opposing that, um, keeping it from moving. And this is with, uh, sorry, with motion, once it starts moving. And believe it or not, they're not the same. So let's go ahead and do our little demo. We're going to start with smooth surfaces. So I've got my smooth surface shoe and I've got my smooth surface table. I'm going to need two volunteers. One volunteer is going to pull my shoe. The other volunteer is going to hit my record button. Let me have Kia. You get to choose first. You want to pull or you want to hit record? Wait, so I get a partner. You get a partner. Um, wait, I hit. You're just going to slide it. Yep. So you're going to, exactly, pull it that way. But we need a recorder first. Can I get a recorder? Let me have, mom, your name? Caitlin. Okay, so Caitlin's going to start. We need to make sure before we do any experiment that we're calibrated. So Caitlin, let me have you come over here. You're going to take my mouse. Hit record. We're going to be doing down in the corner. And let's make sure that when we do hit record, go ahead and click. It's at zero. Not quite. So Kia, can you hit the zero button for me on the sensor? Perfect. Now it's zero. Okay, stop. And then let's try this again. I'm going to have Caitlin, right? Hit record. And then Kia, I want you to pull as slow as possible at a constant speed. So go ahead and record Caitlin and Kia, slow and steady. All right, so what we see here is really not much. Go ahead and stop recording. And I'm not gonna let you guys leave because I wanna analyze this data. If I zoom in, I am hoping that the information means we see right here is very similar to kind of that graph that you have on your sheet. So let's zoom in a little bit more. I've got a little max point right here. Starts at zero, increases, and then it steadies out. So this looks pretty good. Let's give our two volunteers two claps. Very good job. All right. So. Yours has a little bit of a more drastic scenario. We don't have a heavy shoe, so Kia did a good job and Caitlin did a good job recording. But we do hit a little maximum right here, and we also have a portion where it's pretty steady. This is our force. I want you to think about the diagram that we created here. When I start at zero force, and then my force starts steadily increasing. What type of motion is happening? What part of this scenario, these scenarios that we discussed here, is just this portion right here? Rachel, what do you think? This is your at rest. 
We talked about how friction, the applied force increases and the frictional force will match it. And it increases, increases, increases until it hits this maximum point. And then once it hits that maximum point, what do you think happens? What do you think is happening? After it hits that max force, what's going to happen after that? Eric? It stays there. It stays there. Stays. That's when it starts accelerating. So notice how it dips and then it steadies out. So I want you to write this in your graph. This is when you start filling in information. We are um, not moving. So at rest. For this increasing part, this is what we refer to as static friction. Here at the peak, that's when we've got transition into acceleration. I'm coming up. A lot of trouble writing sideways. Okay, so at this point, we've got acceleration. What is this at the very top right there? Sean? What does that peak represent though? Rachel? Maximum static friction. Very good. We said that there was a maximum that our static friction could reach. And then once our um, applied force exceeds that, it can't get any higher. So that's why you see that peak there. Okay, can you guys estimate our values here are not the same as yours, but on your graph, what would that max static friction number value be? What does it show? 5.7. 5.7? Yes. Five points about five, something around five point seven newtons. So that's a estimation. That's our max kinetic friction. I'm gonna write these values down. You don't have to write these values down, but we have a pretty light shoe, so our forces are gonna be pretty small. I am going to find the coordinate for this point up here. It says about point two. I wish I had more accuracy, but it's 0.2 newtons just for my graph. And then what do you think happens here in this section where the object is accelerating, but then now the force has steadied out? Let's say this is your constant velocity. So you've got acceleration here and constant velocity here. This is where you get actually your kinetic friction is everything. Oh, I didn't mean to write that the marker. Is everything from this point out. This is all kinetic. Friction. Okay, so we've got at rest, max static, acceleration, and then constant velocity. All of this is kinetic friction. What do you think the kinetic friction is for the constant velocity portion? It gives you a mean value. That means average. What is that value that's given to you there? Alexa? 4.4 newtons. So I want you to pay attention closely. My max static is always going to be greater than my kinetic. So write this down. Static friction is always greater than kinetic friction. Have you guys ever noticed maybe moving boxes or sliding furniture across the ground that to move a really heavy object, 
it's really hard to get it started. Even if you're, maybe you're driving a really big truck, hitting the gas, it takes it a while to get started. But once it's moving, it's pretty easy, right? Once an object is going, it's easy to keep it going. That's inertia. An object at rest wants to stay at rest. So we need a lot of force to oppose that static friction. And then once it's moving, the kinetic friction is not so bad. So I want you to keep in mind static is always greater than kinetic. And then just to give you some number values so we can compare, I'm going to take the mean for our kinetic here, just the average value. And this mean is 0 0.1. 0 0.1 newton. Okay, I'm going to have two more volunteers because this time we're going to change our surface. So we're having um, one person record and the next person is going to drag my shoe. Any volunteers? Easy peasy. Don't all volunteer at once, everybody. I've got court. <laughs> And I've got a wood board now. So these are no longer smooth surfaces. Can I have Ashley and Lauren? Let me have you guys come up and volunteer. Not so bad. Pretty easy. This simulation is really tricky. So Ashley, you can hit record. Um, or sorry, Lauren, you can hit record. And Ashley, I just want you to drag it as as constant a speed as possible really slow. So let me have Ashley. Well, let me um, stop first and then go ahead and hit record, um, Lauren, and then Ashley, start pulling. Okay, good. Okay, go ahead and stop. We didn't calibrate it, so our values are going to be slightly off, but I, what I want you to notice is I've got my peak and I've got my constant velocity here. So I'm gonna zoom in. We're just gonna focus on this part. Looks pretty good. So let's give our two volunteers two claps. We've got a little bit of error because we have this gap. It should start at zero and it doesn't. But regardless, we're gonna get good um, an idea of the pattern. If they're more rough, what do you think is gonna happen to the static and kinetic friction? It's gonna what? It's, it's going to be more dispersed, but what about the number values? It's going to increase. The more rough your objects are, the greater the frictional values are going to be. So this point right here, let me add my coordinates. Uh, where, where are these values? I have 0 0.4 for two rough surfaces. And then when I have my average, kind of in this constant velocity section right here. The reason why we take a mean is because it's always going to be a little bit skewed. I have 0 0.3, so definite increase. It increased by 0.2 from the two smooth surfaces. Oh, tell us she can come in. I, I put it over here. <laughs> um, you can take it out if you want to. Okay, the next thing I want to talk about is what would happen if I increase the normal force. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to have my volunteer drag it, and I'm going to push down on my shoe. So if I were to push down on my shoe in this scenario, what do I need to add in my force body diagram? Alexa. Add. Now I have a force applied on the shoe, adding to the force of gravity, pulling down on the shoe. And if that happens, what's going to happen to my normal force? If I add a push down, do it. It's going to increase because remember, it's still balanced. So now my applied force is going to add to my gravitational force, and now my normal force is going to be this big. Let's see what happens then. I want two volunteers. If you're not going to volunteer, I'm going to call up a couple. 
This one is another dragging and recording. Okay, let me have Rachel and Ewan. Yes. <laughs> you guys can decide who wants to record and who wants to drag. Okay. So, Rachel, let me have you started. I want to make sure we zero this out so we don't have any skewed data. This is important. Oh, drag your mouse to this button right here. What's up? Do you see the mouse? Maybe. Oh, you're looking at, sorry, you're looking at the wrong. Oh. <laughs> you're going to look up here. So, hit record. Oh, okay. All right. So, you and let me have you press zero. Let's zero it out. Pasco Capstone does this, and you're going to see this when you collect data tomorrow. It's going to start like screw giving you screwy data. We'll work with what we have. Usually when this happens, you just shut it down and restart it again, but I don't want to take the time to do that. So um, do we have it zeroed out? Go ahead and stop, and then we're going to start recording. Okay, so go ahead and record, and then you and you're going to drag it in a constant, steady, slow speed. All right, pretty good. I'm going to let go. So, Rachel, go ahead and stop it. With my, the weight of my hand pushing down, it took Ewan quite a bit of time to get it moving when I told them to go at a steady pace. So, this is now our graph, our maximum data point here for the. Um, Static friction is 6.5. Our mean value for the steady portion, I'm going to just kind of like condense it out to this steady section. Our average is going to be 4.6. So notice how much bigger it is now that I've added a greater normal force. 6.5 newtons, that's more than 10 times the value. And then 4.6. So the force has increased by over 10 times my value without the increased normal force. Here's your conclusion. On your physics helper, you have a force of friction equation. I'm not going to make you memorize it. I'm not even going to make you use it. It has the um, equation force of friction equals mu times n. So it looks like this. This is your normal force. And this is something we call mu. It is the roughness or the stickiness between two objects. So we know as we increase roughness, frictional force increases. We also know as we increase the normal force, frictional force increases. That's all I want you to take from that equation. I'm not going to have you calculate any values using that equation, but I want you to know what affects your frictional force. So anytime I talk about uh, a mu value, it increases when you have two rough surfaces and it decreases when you have smoother surfaces. It increases if they're sticky, it decreases if they're smooth. So, any questions? I am going to have a few graphs like this on your quiz, so I want to make sure you understand that analysis. And then for the remainder of the period, you've got worksheet three. I want you to work on that with your group members. And then if we have time, we'll whiteboard a few of those. Pull out the purple worksheet and your warm up. I'm going to stamp both today. Yes. And the purple worksheet goes in the back of your packet.